when you're buying from eBay, particularly when things are listed as faulty or broken or spares and repairs, or my personal least favorite, untested, you never really know what you're gonna get. A lot of the time you can be completely wasting your money, but sometimes you can come across something pretty good. Hi and welcome back to the shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and this is my bargain now fully working Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So if you didn't already know this is the additional controller you can get for the Nintendo Switch and for my money it is one of the best controllers on the market today. It's got a fantastic d-pad, nice analog sticks, lovely big face buttons and the ergonomics really really comfortable to hold. Now I've been after a new one of these for a little while but they are quite expensive. The cheapest one I managed to find online brand new was from Smith's Toys and that was like £50 and then when I started looking on eBay there were a lot that were quite a bit cheaper and I figured a second hand one wouldn't be too bad but there were quite a few that looked a little bit dirty or worn and then that got me thinking well there's probably some for sale on there that don't work that maybe I'd be able to fix so I started searching for faulty switch pro controller which is when I came across this one here now just looking at the listing it was listed as faulty ls nintendo switch pro controller hac 013 black Bluetooth wireless read. And whenever you see read in capitals, you know it is important to read the details of the listing and find out exactly what is wrong with it. It does say faulty right from the start of the listing, so it's not like they're trying to hide anything, but you know, faults with these sorts of things could be absolutely anything. There could be an easy fix. They could be something that is impossible to fix. Could be a whole load of different faults. So it's always worth reading the listing. Now in the case of this one, faulty left stick LS is broken slash loose slash floppy. LS doesn't work at all. Otherwise working. Some marks from previous use. Includes only what is shown in photos, no accessories or additional packaging. So I'd looked at quite a few faulty ones. Usually they were listed around the £30 mark. A lot of them have drift, which can be a little bit of a minefield anyway. But this one with a faulty wobbly stick, I'd had a similar issue a while ago with an Xbox controller, which I've got a video for somewhere on here. I'll try and remember to link it up there. But that one had a wobbly stick. And when I dismantled it, it was just the kind of the, not the joystick itself, but the cap that had cracked and broken and just needed replacing. So I was hoping it would be a simple fix like that. As I say, most of the faulty ones I'd looked at were around the £30 mark. This was £22 posted. So when you factor in the cost of the postage, that's like less than £20 for a new controller if I could manage to get it fixed. And if I needed new parts, there are a lot of things on the market where you can buy like replacement shells, different coloured sticks and things. So there's, there's always options for upgrades like that as well. So I decided to take a punt and ordered it. The seller was fantastic, really good communication, sent it really well packed, which is pretty rare for eBay and always something that gets me a little bit nervous. So I opened it up and it was indeed loose on the left stick. You could literally shake the controller and it was flopping all over the place. So it looked like a similar issue to the Xbox, but was it that straightforward? Let's take a look. Right, I've got a Switch Pro Controller from eBay. I think it cost me just over 20 quid. It seems in fairly decent condition, uh, apart from the obvious. Um, yeah, so the left thumbstick, no good at all. What I'm hoping, because the right thumbstick is fine, I'm hoping it's just the cap that's broken and that the stick inside is fine. Um, the rest of it just largely needs a bit of a clean up. There is a scratch across here, um, but it's not too bad. So yeah, um, get that labeling off. I'll need to clean up that sticky mess off there. And it's the first time I've opened one of these up, so I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to do that too. So step one obviously is gonna be these two, just standard crosshead screws here and here. So. I'll get those out first and see where that takes us. Okay, so those just slot straight off and reveal another two on each side. So we'll get those out. Feels like this central section is like an outer casing that will lift off. Yep, so that pops straight off the back. Put that to one side. At this stage, we can get to a battery. So, see if I can just lift that out with a spudger. Yep, no exposed 
screws in there but there is one here and one here and one here now seeing as the front still seems to be attached it looks like that's my next step so these are different these are little shorter black screws they might be shorter i don't know but the black ones are for this step get the feeling there might be some in here yeah i'll need a longer screwdriver that's out there that was five one two three four five once we've got the outer casing off and now i should be able to separate So just budger in at the side and a slight twist seems to be separating that side okay. Let's try it on the other side. And there we go, we're now separated. There is a ribbon cable in place here with a little section that I think I'll need to lift up. Bit of an awkward angle. There we go. So that just needed flipping up. Right now, looking at my thumbstick, it's actually the top of this bit that has snapped, like, that still moves. If I compare it to this one where the top will just slide off. So, right, I th think I could just try and glue that back on as it is. I might be better trying to remove this bit first, then glue it on, and then try that out. Now, if that doesn't hold, if that doesn't work, then I'll just order a replacement one. But I've got an idea because it's got a slight hole in it. I've, I've got an idea. These, uh, to pull it out is going to be tricky, but I think if I put a small screw in, I should be able to get it out with pliers. These screws are a bit big. So I'm going to have a little look through some spare screws and see what I can find. Got a couple of small ones here from, I think they're from inside the DS Lite. So if you can see, there's like the plastic bit that's, that's snapped off is inside the thumbstick, which should have an opening like that. So my plan is try and get that screwed in there, which is maybe I need something smaller. I wonder if I've got anything smaller than that. I think that's smaller. I'll need a smaller screwdriver for that. I'm not even sure what this one's from, but it's a tiny little screw. And it's gone into the hole nicely, so that's just screwed in there. Now to get me pliers. Okay, so these are quite handy. These are engineer um, screw pliers. So they've got like a little circular grip opening at the end, so they can grip onto screws and untwist them. And in this case, hopefully pull them out. So get a grip on that. Have I gone too far in? That's the problem. Oh, there we go. That just popped straight out. Right. So I can undo my screw. And now what I've got is, well, let's let's clear some of this mess out of the way. So I do have the option that I could just get a replacement joystick and um, desolder this one and put the new one in. Um, but what I want to try and do is get this glued back onto here. Um, that doesn't look like there's any parts missing, it's literally just snapped straight off. So to get it to line up isn't too bad. Um, but obviously it's going to be under some strain when it's being pushed. So what I am planning to do is find some sort of wire or rod that's going to be the right size for going in there and glue that in so that that's glued to the wire and then connected at that point, it's less likely to, to break it off. A bit like reinforced concrete where you've got like the, the steel rods going through it. So I need to see if I've got anything suitable. I've had a look through a box of components and this fairly hefty capacitor has got quite a thick wire on it. Um, it's still a fairly loose fit, 
but it'll give room for the glue um, so shouldn't be too bad and then so I'll cut a bit off it and I've got my glue it's like a, a gel type of super glue decent coating of glue on that and some glue on the end of my stick just spread it all the way to the edges then put my wire into the hole that's in the right position, a little bit of pressure now I'll need my flush cutters Just trim the top of the wire off and then try to get it so that I can get a little bit of glue down the gap. It is like a gel so it might not go all the way down. I don't want too much on top. But hopefully from where I pushed it down a bit has come up in, in the middle there. So just smooth off the top there. And then possibly reinforce with a little extra glue on the sides speaking of the sides there's a bit of glue there that I don't want because I still want to be able to slide that cap on quite well without putting any excess strain on it I'm just using a, a resistor as a tiny little glue spreader in this case obviously I don't want the glue to slip down to the mechanism itself so I'm careful not to let it go that far down I just want to try and get some in these gaps as it goes around who knows, maybe this will be enough to keep it going, and if not, well, I'll order a new thumbstick. But like I did with the uh, Xbox shoulder button, it's quite nice being able to actually fix what you've got rather than replace it. I've got this activator spray. Give it a quick go, obviously, off camera. Just to speed up that process a bit. Still seems to be moving okay. It does kind of lock in position, but they do that anyway, look. So that's not an issue. Right, well, I suppose... I should put it back together and see if it works. If it does, then um, good times. So I'm gonna start with the ribbon. So it'll actually come quite far out. It's got quite a, quite a, a generous zigzag on it. That's in. I think if it doesn't work afterwards, then I'll that'll be my first port of call. I'll slide that one onto there. Carefully see if this one will now slide onto here, despite the glue. Feels all right. Feed that through there. Get all that pushed back together. So now I've got those five black screws to put in place, including these two kind of almost hidden ones. Let's give the thumbsticks a quick check, that feels okay. That feels all right too. Get the battery back in. And the rear shell back on. That just snaps in position. I've got one, two, three, four screws to go in there. Now these bits back on. So which way do they go? There we go. <laughs> it's quite hard to work out which way around they went. Smaller screwdriver needed for that, I think. Right, now for the sticky residue from the tape. Dry microfiber cloth is always good for getting sticky bits off. 
great thumbstick moves okay. Left ones are now also fine too. Uh, let's see if we can get some power in it. Power in there. It's got some charge in it. Put that in there. And we're charging. So that's a start. And with it plugged in, will it switch on? Right, so that's looking to pair with something. Right, I'll go and find my switch. So that's now searching. So let's press L and R on the controller. Maybe I need to like unpair it from its old switch or something like that. Let's try to reset. There we go. Right, so if we press A when we're ready. Uh, home button. System settings. Feels good. Controllers and sensors. Calibrate control sticks. So you can see that's absolutely fine. To the left, right, up, down. Um, so that's fine. And just while we're at it, let's have a look at the right stick. Well, good. Okay, so I'm going to leave that charging now. And I might, I don't know, I might give it a new shell at some point because that little scratch is bugging me but to be honest it's in better condition than i thought it was going to be there's a slight scuff here that i'm going to try and clean up got this poly watch stuff tiny spot of that Now obviously this part of the controller's got a bit of a matte finish, so I don't want to polish it up too much. You can buy just replacement caps for those bits, um, but that is something I'll investigate for a future project. For now, I've got myself a fully working Switch Pro controller for 20 quid, which is pretty good going. So it doesn't always work out like that, but it is nice when it does. Less than an hour of getting it out of the box, I had this thing up, running, on charge, ready to use on my Switch, and I'm delighted with it. The condition of it is actually a lot better. I mean, it did say on the listing, um, some marks from previous use. So I was expecting it to be fairly battered because that's usually eBay code for has been utterly destroyed by my child or dog or insert other destructive force here. So yeah, I was quite pleased when it cleaned up quite nicely. And with the uh, control stick all fixed up, it's, it's perfect. So yeah, I am really, really pleased with how that's turned out. Now, one thing I did think about after the event was that um, I used a small screw in the first instance to get into the joystick and then pull it back out. Uh, what I could have actually done, and if this doesn't hold and if it ends up breaking again, like that hole went right the way through. What I could have done is found a longer, very thin screw, cut off a little bit from the top of the joystick and just screwed it straight in. That might have been a bit more of a secure fit, particularly combined with the glue. But I'm hoping that the thick wire and the super glue should hold it enough. I mean, you know, all I'm going to be doing with this is just moving it around. And the actual circular gate here tends to keep it in position quite well. So unless I actually drop it on a hard floor or something like that, I'm, I'm not expecting this to break anytime soon. I'm thinking it's going to last me years and years to come, but time will tell. This was the first time I'd taken one of these apart and I was pleasantly surprised, particularly down to things like the crosshead screws. We just don't see that so much anymore. And Nintendo have never really been a big fan of doing that kind of thing, not since like their very, very early consoles that they didn't expect anybody to be taking apart. And the way this goes together actually ends up with like a really neat kind of almost screw free finish without it having all those things like with your PlayStation and your Xbox controllers where you have to like force bits apart and heat them and pop them. This was quite easy. I did use a spudger to separate some parts, but it's not like there were any clips really kind of levering them together. It was a nice straightforward process. I didn't look at any guides. I just kind of figured it out as I went along. Should have probably looked at some guides, but there we go. And it came apart easily and it was easy to put back together again. The only really tricky bit was the ribbon 
uh, connector to put the two together. But even then, that was kind of concertinaed and would stretch long enough to be able to get into the awkward gap to put it in place and, and clip it down. So, yeah, I am quite looking forward to doing some more projects with these things in future and i will be keeping an eye out for any more faulty ones that i might be able to have a go at fixing if you've got one of these and you've had other faults with it let me know i'll try and keep an eye out i've already had someone on my instagram point out that they had one with drift so i'm going to look and see if i can get hold of one with drift and see if there's any easy ways of sorting that out now when i had been waiting for this to arrive i did check on Z Labs, and they did have replacement thumbsticks if i needed those and a few extra bits for these controllers just like they have stuff for everything else if you are into modding definitely check them out i've got an affiliate link in the description that means if you shop on Z Labs and you use my link i get a little kickback to support my channel at no extra cost to you and if you use the code joe bleeps you get a bit of money off your order as well i'll also leave a link to my amazon storefront and i'm hoping to add a few switch pro controller bits and pieces on there as well i know extreme rate do some shells for those so i'm going to maybe consider doing one of them so that is it from me for now this is joe bleeps signing off from the shed. If you want to keep watching me, there should be some more clips popping up here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.